How you doing? You know what? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing very good. I'm doing very good. But how could you not? You're in Melbourne. Yeah, I'm in Melbourne. I've like got I'm in a- like in the suburbs of Dallas. You're in one of the cooler places on earth. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's, quite, it's quiet now. I would imagine. The it's quiet everywhere. Tumbleweeds at times. Ah, <laughs> I, I did see some like news feeds where like um, kangaroos and stuff are starting to kind of come back into the city. Is that true? Yeah, there's kangaroos everywhere. Everywhere. I can, <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. No, it's interesting. They, they opened up the beach, you know, like, you know, it's like everyone, you're not allowed to gather two people. Bondi Beach, like within 30 minutes was absolutely packed with people so it doesn't take much to get people out no here either yeah thanks for spending some time to connect um uh, love and appreciate you matt very much um i've been connecting with um, you know pastors around the globe um talking about life you know now it's kind of like in the midst of COVID 19 coming out of COVID 19 wherever COVID 19 is uh, <laughs> wanted to talk with you and particularly because um, you know, I spoke with, we were chatting earlier about John Tyson. Um, man, the States have just yeah. been hit so, so hard. Um, 1.5 million cases I was reading today. Uh, staggeringly, almost 100,000 people, lives gone. New York hit particularly hard. But yeah. I suppose for you, um, in Texas, I mean, Texas alone, 50,000 cases. Yeah. Uh, that's just huge. That's daunting when you think about the implications of all of that. What, what's that been like for you and for your family in the States? Yeah, so, um, of course, like you're saying, in, there are certain places in the United States that are, that are hot spots, kind of ground zeros for uh, the, the, the virus. And so New York certainly is one of those. California, uh, specifically Los Angeles, uh, is one of those. Where, so where you have, uh, of course, high population density, the, the virus is gonna be more of an issue. Um, uh, Texas uh, is an interesting animal because she has some really massive cities. Houston's the third largest city in the United States. You've got really? Dallas, this sprawling metroplex. Then you have smaller mid-level cities like uh, Amarillo and El Paso. Um, and, and so uh, depending on where you are, your experience might be completely different. Um, And then the states have a certain amount of power and then the federal government has a certain amount of power. Uh, And so a lot of your experience is going to be determined about which state you're in uh, and and then maybe even what county of the state that you're in, um, what city you're in, in that county. It it can just vary from place to place to place. So uh, where I am in Denton County in Texas in the DFW Metroplex has not been hit hard, but 30 minutes south of me, in Dallas County, they, they have been hit extremely hard, although I think they're in week two of decline. So the curve has not just flattened, but it's now starting to decline. Uh, Texas is by nature, in fact, I think this is one of the things uh, we have in common with Australia. Uh, we're a very independent people. We're a very, we're a people that are proud. Uh, we, we actually, many people in Texas think we should be our own nation. Uh, and man, they might actually be able to pull it off. And um, <clears throat> and so we're in phase two of opening right now. Uh, and so our bars and um, barbara shops and gyms and all that, they're open now uh, with some restrictions. I think it's 50% capacity right now. We're about two weeks from that being bumped up again, unless there's a spike. Uh, places of worship, even large places of worship, uh, have started to open here. Not all of us have. We still have not. Um, I... I When we come back, I don't want it to feel like you're walking into a trauma hospital. Uh, And so we're going to wait a little bit longer. Our online stuff seems to be going well for now. I'm not the biggest online guy. Uh, I want embodied worship. I mean, that was the reason we started to actually even roll off our campuses. But but, but we'll wait a little bit longer now because those, those numbers are bearing that our people are tuned in, our people are still meeting in groups. Uh, over the, the internet, our people are still uh, bought into Bible studies and those kinds of things. But we're moving into summer for us. Uh, and so summer is a downtime for us anyway. We shut a lot of our activities down in the summer to just kind of get like a two month Sabbath for people, just kind of breathe out, uh, rest a little bit, and then re enter the fray come fall. So, so that would be how things are here in my county, in my state, and the, the US. And, and, and zooming out a little bit, I mean, on my news feed, you know, I've seen a lot of um, 
you know, even like rallies and picketing yeah. and heated <laughs> conversation in the States about the whole, you know, lockdown and conspiracies about it. And, you sure. know, how, like, what's that been? Is, is that just a few things or is that quite present for you? Um, you're you're going to have some people uh, on the far right. Um, and, and honestly, not even the far right, probably middle right and over now, uh, who feel as though our government has constitutionally way overreached their authority. Yeah. Um, that the government's responsibility, according to the Constitution, is to protect the rights of citizens, not to protect the health of citizens. Um, and so there's a whole school of thought um, in, in parts of America, not everywhere, but in parts of America. And the more conservative they are, the, the more they tend to trend this way. And the more liberal they are, the more they trend the other way. Um, so conservative right-wing thinking is pro-small government, not big government, uh, which means they want the U.S. government to, to keep their hands out of quite a bit um, to do certain things, but not everything that they do. So they, they have viewed the mandated shutdown and the ticketing uh, of businesses that have tried to operate as a constitutional overreach. And so they're protesting what they perceive to be uh, the government. And, and I would even argue, um, it, while I am happily compliant with the government's mandates, um, I, I would say if we're just speaking constitutional law, they have clearly overstepped their boundaries. Uh, by ticketing, and in one instance here in Dallas, arresting uh, a woman who opened her salon to cut a lady's hair. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, so there's, and, and like I said, Texans in particular, uh, and the South in particular, uh, for all the ways it gets mocked and picked at, has a bit of a fierce independence um, spirit to it. Um, they, they're, they're more, um, states have power than federal governments have power. They want to be left alone for the most part. They're used to that kind of liberty. Um, and, and so the, the truth is my, my church is probably made up of um, half and half. <laughs> so, so I certainly have some people who are just over it, whatever, come arrest me. Uh, and then I've got some people that uh, the psychology of this is really difficult. They're anxious. They're afraid. They're, and, and so what we've tried to do is just clearly co communicate what our philosophy of reopening is. Um, and, and then we'll open according to that philosophy. And so we're going to uh, obey the government's mandates uh, because we think it's being a good witness. Um, and then we're going to open when we feel um, like it's safe to open. And then we're going to continue our live stream for the next couple of years while people kind of adjust to the new normal. Uh, and then we'll see after a couple of years. I don't like the live stream going out indefinitely, but that's just my own quirk. It's not. I'm sure I'd probably try to root it in missiology or something, ecclesiology, but, uh, but yeah, that, 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 that is certainly happening. There are protests, there are rallies. They're probably not as big as the media is showing them to be, but there certainly is an undercurrent here um, that's growing more and more frustrated. Wow. Now I am, um, you know, hearing you kind of integrate that together. I, I've been encouraged by how TBC have uh, responded, you know, on the ground um, to care for people. And we were just talking a, a moment ago about, you know, sending people up to, to New York city. And do you want to tell us a little bit about that? How you, so, you know, partly, you know, navigating the restrictions, honoring the government and like leading people through their various emotions, but also recognizing, you know, we're the people of God, we're, the, we're light in the midst of yeah. this. We love people, um, which in part is teaching the word and putting on online yeah. services. Absolutely. We want the gospel front and center, but also it's, loving people in the trenches and, and getting out. Sure. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So th there were a couple of fronts that we got active on real quick. I, I think it's helpful to know one of our kind of core values at the village church is this idea of Ephesians four ministry that, that we want our minister. We want our people to grasp that it's not just our paid ministers that have a call on their lives, but that every man and woman that's a Christian that's in our congregation, God's got a call on their lives. So we want to, help them identify how they're gifted. We want to turn them loose. We want to cheer them on. We want to call it out. And, and then we want to champion them as they run. And that has paid massive dividends in this season when, um, I, I don't know if you've heard um, this phrase. I, I thought it was a fascinating phrase that uh, one of the ways that a, a, and like a, a world chess player will practice getting better at chess is they'll play without the queen. 
uh, because people don't know oh, how to wow. play with them. So if you take the queen off the board, it forces you to really be able to know how to play with all the other pieces and it's much harder to win. And so the gathering is kind of our queen, right? That that's our queen. The gathering is, man, this is, and it's right and it's good. And it's, it, we can move her in any direction, go across the board. We can do all sorts of things with the queen. But if you take the queen off the board, now how do we do ministry? How do we make disciples? And so that's one really of the first cool. things some of our people did, um, some of our more high entrepreneurs, is, is they started kind of this little organization for all the small businesses in and around our community where they could support one another and we could um, roll out deals to the community that, hey, swing by this restaurant, this is what they've got for lunch. And then we started doing fundraisers for places like um, Young Lives, which is a ministry to teenage mothers, and um, CCA, uh, Christian, Christian Communities in Action, was needing, uh, was needing resources for um, single moms. And so we would do these fundraisers where um, we would have these local restaurants come up and set up where you could drive through and you could get your meal and you could get your cupcakes and you could get um, your coffee and you could, and all the proceeds of that so some would support the local business, but then the rest would go to these charities that are all localized charities. And so uh, New York put out a call for nurses and medical workers. And so we had uh, some nurses head up uh, to New York City uh, and work. And one of them was at the Coney Island Hospital, which was probably the worst there in New York. At least that's my understanding. I'm, I'm certainly not from New York, but that's kind of my understanding. And, um, and so we've just tried in every possible way, serve our community, um, serve our members, um, but, but be known in this season, uh, for loving the community. Well, love it. Love it, man. And I, I you know, I've, i spent a lot of time with the village church and yeah. one of the things I love about the community is, you know, like it's, it's, it's bold and, and strong and, and, and gospel preaching, right. Which is, is beautiful yeah. and right and true, but community, like to me, it's like you, it's, it's like redeemed Texan, you know, it's like hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, Texans are wildly hospital, hospitable. Yeah, that, absolutely. So to see that use for the kingdom, see you guys opening things up. I saw like out the front, you know, people coming in and handing yeah. out free things and serving and just that, that spirit of generosity and welcome is just, it's good. It's encouraging. I love it. Well, hopefully that's, that's our heartbeat is to serve and love and, and be kind of a tangible, visible presence of the love and compassion of Christ. Now, Matt, um, obviously, you know, as a, as, as a pastor, you know, you're, you know, you're thinking, you know, helicopter, you're like, okay, church needs to do this. We're mobilizing people to do that. Obviously though, these things, you know, COVID-19 hits us personally, uh, sure. family wise, you know, I got four kids at home at the moment and a you know, small house and it's just like chaos. Um, sure. <laughs> what's, what, what's it, what's it, what is it, what has it meant for you personally? Um, yes, you're as a pastor, but for you personally, husband, father, what is that? What's that like? You know, Lauren and I have laughed because I'm the extrovert and she's more of an introvert and neither of us are getting what we want right now. <laughs> so like I'm, I'm stuck in the house and want to kind of meet people and talk with people and sit down with people. And I can't do that. And she wants space and quiet and to be left alone. And she can't get that now. Uh, and so certainly we've had to figure out um, new rhythms and how to rest in the Lord in new ways. And, you know, I had some rhythms and processes that involved me leaving here and going to places that were very um, encouraging to my soul. And, um, and so I've had to find that in other places. And so certainly there's been some back to the drawing board. Uh, but I have loved the additional family time. Uh, I think when all said and done, one of the things that we're going to look back on is that we got this special gift with our kids. There was this unbroken um, I'm here when you get up in the morning, I'm here when we have lunch, I'm here when we have dinner and I'm the one putting you, you know, I'm, I'm here when we're going to bed at night. And so, um, that's been a real gift. Uh, although, um, trying to navigate homeschooling, um, my kids are more like me than they're like their mother. Lauren was kind of straight A school was kind of her thing. Uh, and I was just get by and whatever. And my kids are almost all like me. So that stresses Lauren out pretty bad. Uh, but we got through it there. The kids are now on, I think what, what we'll call holiday. And so we got the summer holiday that, that has started. Uh, and so now it's summertime. So summertime just sounds so amazing. You know, it's just hitting into winter here. So, yeah, but I'm see, I'm jealous of that my, my preference is hoodie weather. Uh, <laughs> I would rather be a little cool than always sweating. 
So, uh, so yeah, I, I prefer, I wish I was going back into winter, um, not into a hundred degrees Fahrenheit, which is what it'll be here soon. Well, it is, I'm, I'm encouraged to hear by that family. I mean, I've, I've certainly experienced it, you know, in our household, like, I think I was saying to you before, like waking up, I've taken my son for a walk every morning. Now he's taking me for the walk. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> he, he loves it. And, you know, it's this, um, it's doing what's quite, um, you know, familiar in one sense, but new. It's like you're discovering, you know, nature at the moment to me is just is beautiful and getting outside and, and experiencing that when you're locked with screens all day. Uh, yeah. Is really quite, quite beautiful. I am very much over my screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like for the, for the first bit, it was like, everyone was just like churning information and online that like 24 seven. And, and now I think, yeah, people are like, hang on, this is, this is not quite sustainable. We need new rhythms. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm way, way, way over it. <laughs> now, I, Matt, can't... I, um, I want to talk a little bit about the gospel. Um, cause I know you love, the, I know you love the gospel. Um, I was chatting with someone yesterday and it, there's a sense in which, you know, in a moment like this where so much changes so much, you know, you lose a whole bunch of things and, you know, it's, it's been encouraging for me to see how the gospel holds up. Yeah. Amen. Um, Jesus remains true and, 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 and not just true, but like beautiful in a moment like this in it, like yeah. so much just shines in the midst of this, uh, his love for us, uh, his grace for us, his certainty, his security. Um, I just find his comfort, his closeness, all of these wonderful things. How, how yeah. has the gospel spoken to, to you in this moment and, 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 and even the people that you're, you're, you're communicating with and your church? Yeah, so, you know, the, the beauty of the gospel in a moment like this is many of us have had stripped from us those other things that might feed into a false identity. Uh, and so right now, I, I don't have, you know, I'm not preaching to a massive crowd that's affirming and I'm speaking to one dude behind a camera and another guy on the soundboard back there and a couple of people that, that are playing in a, a much smaller band than we're used to. And so um, where there are these things in our lives that maybe would have given us um, some false identity or some kind of false meaning most of that's been stripped away. And so what we're left with is, is the thing that can't ever be taken from us, right? Like, like if I never leave this house again, Jesus is Lord, Savior, friend. Uh, and so he really is. And, and I've often tried to say that the one thing that cannot be taken from me is that God has saved me in Christ and I belong to him. So uh, the village could fire me. Lauren could leave me. The, the kids could want nothing to do with me. And it still doesn't change my fundamental identity. Um, and that's a really powerful force in a, in a season like this where I might not be able to do this or do that or get this done or, or, or operate the way I want to operate. But here, what is most true about me is just as true right now as it was before all this began. And it'll be just as true about me when all this is over. And there's a sustaining power to that, um, that honestly, all the other things don't have. So, so Lauren being my wife is simply not enough. Me being the pastor of the Village Church is not enough. My soul would be insatiable for affirmation. Uh, my appetite would be insatiable. My right and and so uh, none of those things can do uh, or provide for me what God has provided for me in Christ, which is reconciliation to Him and a home for my soul. Um, and so it is seasons like this, and it it is more often than not in those difficult seasons. That, that we start to agree with Paul in the back half of Romans chapter eight. Yeah. It's a great, great text. Matt, one of the um, beautiful words and it's so true and so encouraging. I, I've noticed a lot of, a lot of more, a lot more people have been, you know, connecting into church and, you know, we're doing Alpha at the moment and um, people are asking big questions and, you know, in Australia, yeah. you know, vast majority of people are not Christians. And yet I think in a moment like this, Australia's, you know, like the States, you know, Melbourne, beautiful city, so many, as you say, other things that we can build our identity on and go to. In a moment like this, they're taken away. We're seeing people ask the big questions, explore Christianity. What, yeah. what, would, what would be your, like, for those maybe, you know, tuning in right now who are like, oh, I'm really interested in this Jesus thing and I like this, I've got questions here. You know, I want what Matt's got and what he just said. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. ha, ha, what, like what would be your word to them? Yeah. So, you know, and, and you brought it up and I think it, it can be found almost anywhere in the world. And, and that's the, the alpha course, uh, which is just such a gift of God's grace across the world to those who are asking those kinds of questions. Is there more? Uh, what is life really about? What, what's actually going on here? What does this person, Jesus, have to do with this? Why, why, so Alpha kind of addresses those kinds of questions in a way that, that almost anybody can hop in on. So, man, I, I would just encourage them to Google Alpha wherever they are in the world uh, and, and then just hop in. It'll probably be a virtual group right now, uh, <laughs> but that's probably the only way you're gathering right now anyway. And so I would, I would try to find a place like that or, man, grab the Bible and start reading the book of John. Uh, yeah. If there's no alpha class around you, you're like, yeah, I'm not quite there yet. Then man, hop online, read the book of John uh, and, and just watch the love of Jesus uh, for those who are far from him. Pay attention uh, to how God pursues those who are far from him, that he, doesn't, he, that, that he doesn't come to bring condemnation, but to save from condemnation. Uh, and so the, those are, and I would probably inverse the order. I would read the gospel of John and I would get in an alpha class. Yeah, that's great. That's great. It's so helpful, Matt. Um, I don't know what that was. That you, was that a, a little puppy? You My dog, on? and he found his he found his toy, and so is this a new dog? I don't remember meeting Woodrow. This is new. I've not met. Yeah, this is Woodrow right here. Woods, say hi to all All right, he's got this squeaky toy, and he like never touches it. Touches it, and now all of a sudden I'm on with you, and Lauren's not home. And I've already gone, I had to text Reed, hey, come get this animal because it was, get down, no. It's um, fine. It's chaos over here. I love it. I yeah, love it. it's real life. It's real life. It's unscripted real life. Here we are. It is. Hey, this is our own personal uh, live TV show. Matt, we, uh, we were chatting before that, um, you know, uh, flights of book, uh, to have you and your family, Lauren, and then the kids come to Australia. Yeah. Uh, in the back half of this year, um, obviously still just monitoring government restrictions and things yeah. like that. Uh, so we'll, we'll continue to watch that, but we are, you know, Lord willing, uh, really hopeful about having you down under. Uh, you've been such a great friend to me and to City on a Hill. And uh, yeah, we you know, really look forward to that. I thought, um, you know, for everyone who's tuning in now, would you, just as we finish, would you like to, to pray for us? Um, oh, I would love that. That would be special. I would love that. Let me do it. Uh, Father, I thank you for City on a Hill. God, I thank you for Guy Mason. Thank you for his leadership. Thank you for how uh, the gospel is moving on the continent of Australia and, and over into New Zealand and up into uh, China. And so I thank you and praise you, God, for your good work. Uh, pray a blessing over them. Pray healing uh, for uh, their sick, a lifting of this virus, a, a discovery of a vaccine. We pray uh, renewal and revival and power uh, over this nation, over this church, uh, that, that you would renew the hearts of your people and that you would pour out your spirit in a unique and profound way. And it's for your beautiful name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Hey, love you, brother.